formula that focuses directly on brain health, nerve growth factors, and optimizing your cellular energy at the same time. DNA Force is one of the most expensive formulas to produce. Some of the ingredients in DNA Force are $12,000 a kilogram. We are using the coveted, patented, only American source of PQQ, CoQ10, and more. You want the best that's out there at the lowest price anywhere? Well, we're bringing you a total win-win. The ultimate value, cutting-edge, trailblazing game-changer that also supports the info war. We have produced a limited run of DNA Force, and it will take up to 12 weeks to produce more once we sell out. Secure your DNA Force today at InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. DNA Force from InfoWars Life. Celebrate the spirit of freedom and liberty upon which our nation was founded at InfoWarsShop.com. Molon Lave is ancient Greek for come and take it. This popular design combines both classic Greek Spartan imagery with modern M16 assault rifles. Now available in women's tees and proudly made in the USA. Celebrate the spirit of 1776 with the George Washington brass belt buckle or this incredibly sharp looking 1776 hat. Badass. And be sure to check out the new arrivals at InfoWars Life, where you can prepare your body to perform at peak levels with Survival Shield Nascent Iodine, Super Male Vitality, and Fluoride Shield. And wake up, America. Immune Support Blend is the healthy choice for the gourmet coffee lover. So get incredibly high-quality, freedom-based products and help fund the revolution at InfoWarsShop.com. I'm Joe Biggs with InfoWars.com here at the Presbyterian Hospital in Dallas, Texas. We just got out of the press conference about the Ebola situation happening here. Governor Perry spoke, um, a superintendent, a judge, and a couple other local people that worked at the hospital as well. Governor Perry didn't have a whole lot to say. He dodged questions. He was your typical politician when it came down to things. There is no place in the world, I would suggest to you, that has better professionals, better ability to address this than in Texas. We wish it were somewhere else. I was able to shout out a question though and ask, why aren't flights from West Africa into the USA being stopped like other countries have done in Europe, France? Why is there a flight from West Africa into America like other countries have done? I repeat the question, please. Why haven't the flights from West Africa been stopped from coming into America like Europe and France have done? That's a question that's uh, really not in my domain. One of the other interesting things as well, though, the superintendent for Dallas got out and spoke, and he said that there had been five students who had been in contact with the affected patient. We were informed this morning by the, the Dallas County Health, uh, Health and Human Services that these five students uh, had, could possibly have been in contact with uh, the patient at the home over the weekend. We're told that the patient developed symptoms on the 24th, which, which means that those children uh, could potentially have had contact with them and been at those schools. Is that not right? Um, they, they had contact with, they possibly had contact with the patient um, over the weekend, and they have been in school since then. Now these five students are able to move freely because right now they aren't exhibiting any kind of uh, symptoms of the Ebola virus. Now, it's not to say that in the next day or so they won't, but who knows where that child or children will be when those side effects start to kick in. Are they going to be at a mall? Are they going to be at Chuck E. Cheese? Are they going to be at an airport where all of a sudden they start coughing or throwing up and that gets on other people and we have more people affected? The people here are not taking this crisis serious. One of the guys got up, the judge, and said that there is zero chance, zero chance that anyone that they've already seen or talked to could spread this right now. We're not afraid that if we go talk to the next door neighbor of this person that we're going to get Ebola because we understand what science is. We understand we have zero chance of getting that from that next door neighbor. And there's absolutely zero chance um, that um, 
you, you can be infected by Ebola uh, by simply going into a building where a person is under um, isolation. There's zero chance that you can get this unless someone just spits on you because we all know viruses never mutate. Things like that never happen. Mother Nature doesn't find a way to move on and do something else and break outside the box because that never happens. These guys want you to believe that there's nothing that can possibly happen. And I can understand one of the reasons why they don't want people to go into a panic fear and run around crazy. But at the same time, people need to know the real risk involved. You know, I would rather stay at home for the next week or so than go out in public and possibly get something that could kill me. If I have to stay or do something like that, I'll, I'll take that risk. But I don't want to send my children to school when there's five students who are allowed to go run it freely that have been in contact. And they're saying right now that there's a possibility that there's 18 people so far that they know of that have been in contact with patient zero that are being monitored. So in regards to anybody else that might have come in contact with this person, uh, that's, that's, that's well, patient zero. So what I'm saying to you is that we're talking about around us. Uh, between 12 and 18 patients. These five are the children contacts, of the patient? Contacts. 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 First responders, they're being able, they're, they're allowed to be here. The guys who initially went and picked up the patient, they're allowed to be here right now because they aren't exhibiting any side effects, any kind of symptoms of the Ebola virus. But who's to say in the next 20 minutes or another day or so in one of their 24 hour shifts that they have that they don't start coughing up on another patient? Uh, we don't need people, we need people to remain calm and do what Dallas County people are good at. We are good. Mayor Rawlings, Zach, uh, the, frankly, uh, President Obama's team and, uh, and the CDC's team, and Dr. Freed, we're good at keeping you safe and you're good at staying calm. This is ridiculous. They're saying they're taking every step, every measure, and they're being as smart as possible about it, but they're not really doing it. They're being very unprofessional and they're not handling this the way they should. CDC is saying they're warning funeral homes to be ready for a large number of bodies. We know in Georgia there's this huge thing of plastic coffins that have been stored there for a, quite some time. This is all crazy. Our borders are wide open. We're allowing this to happen. The TSA attacks American citizens and lets illegals roam freely through without identification. There's no way to screen for this stuff. This is crazy. Keep your eyes open and stay tuned for more reports. I'm Joe Biggs with Infowars.com here in Ebola, USA. I want to say this, uh, just a couple of things, though, that I think is important because you are all intelligent, okay? All right? The science says that if you are not exhibiting symptoms of this, there is zero chance that you can transmit this. Not minuscule, zero chance. I asked that question earlier. If you want to do what's good by your viewers, you will tell them it's zero chance. Good evening, everyone. I'm Darren McBreen, and here are some of today's top headlines breaking right now at InfoWars.com. Five students within the family circle of the Dallas Ebola patient will not be quarantined. This despite the fact they may be in the incubation cycle of the deadly disease. While CDC and local health officials are in close interaction with the families, they will be allowed to leave their homes until they exhibit symptoms. More evidence surfaces that suggest the ISIS beheadings were staged, as documents reveal that James Foley and Stephen Sotloff had close intelligence connections. Secret Service Director Julia Pearson has resigned over security breaches. Her resignation follows a series of security lapses involving the protection of Barack Obama. For more updates and breaking news, go to InfoWars.com.
The first patient diagnosed with Ebola has been confirmed here in the U.S. There is another enterovirus that has been spreading across the country. It's already claimed the life of one child today in Rhode Island. And now there is another mosquito-borne virus that's making its way up from Latin America, and it could be a problem for the U.S. here shortly. Uh, this is a chikungunya virus, and it is an excruciating mosquito-borne illness. It arrived less than a year ago in the Americas, and it's already infected more than a million people so far. Sufferers complain of days of pain and misery, including joint pain so severe that it can be hard to walk. Now, the carrier of the disease is the genetically modified Aedes aegypti mosquito. Now, this mosquito was tweaked to help control populations of mosquitoes that carry dengue fever. But now, this mosquito has a viral disease of its own. In 2010, we reported that the UN announced plans to combat dengue fever and other mosquito-borne illnesses with genetically modified mosquitoes. Now, these mosquitoes were designed to make them sterile or to simply just kill off the mosquitoes that carry dengue fever. Lo and behold, this project was funded by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. And as mosquitoes are seen mostly as a nuisance, there was very little debate about meddling with nature by introducing billions of new organisms into the system. Kind of like there has been very little debate about bringing patients with Ebola into America or refusing to block the flights from the Ebola zone or even enforcing a mandatory quarantine for those people who fly in to other countries from the Ebola zone. Seems a little crazy, unless that's your plan, is to bring Ebola into the country. Now, the reason why I bring up this particular chikungunya virus is that the 80s Egypti mosquito has been relevant before, particularly when it comes to Project Artichoke. Of course, that is a secret CIA mind control program. And in this particular instance with the mosquito, they were seeking to find ways to spread a virus that could be an incapacitant, not necessarily something that would be deadly for a population, but something that would, of course, destabilize a region. Now, dengue fever has a hidden history. It has been the intense focus of U.S. Army and CIA biological warfare researchers for over 50 years, similar to the Ebola virus. Now, as we've mentioned, we have bio-warfare centers in the Ebola zone doing human tests there in Sierra Leone, coincidentally at the exact same time of this current Ebola outbreak. Now, here is a great article titled, Dengue Fever Outbreak Leads Back to CIA and Army Experiments. Several CIA documents, as well as the findings of a 1975 congressional committee, reveal that several sites in Florida were used for experiments with mosquito-borne dengue fever. Now, one site was Avon Park, which consisted of newly constructed public housing projects for low-income African-American families. And it was here that specially equipped aircraft dropped 600,000 mosquitoes in purpose-built paper bags from above. And besides dengue fever, some of these mosquitoes were also carrying yellow fever. Now, just shortly thereafter, in the spring and summer of 1981, Cuba experienced a severe hemorrhagic dengue fever outbreak. Um, they reported 10,000 people a day coming down with this disease. More than 100,000 people were hospitalized. And this is in addition to a severe swine flu outbreak that Fidel Castro attributed to the CIA. Now, Alvarelli reports that former Fort Detrick researchers told him that they performed advance work on the Cuba outbreak and that it was indeed man-made. The CIA was also accused of launching dengue epidemics in Pakistan, Afghanistan, and Nicaragua in the 80s as well. Now, release of these bioweapons, while not necessarily deadly, it could serve to incapacitate and destabilize those regions whose political ideology does not agree with ours. The U.S. government has subjected people to all sorts of experimentation in the past to further their agenda. There is highly documented historical evidence of malfeasance, so it is justified to question their motives, especially considering the absolute power they have to enforce mandatory vaccines. 
So just consider the track record of the US government. They're morally capable, they are technically capable of doing this, they have no ethical concerns when it comes to using bioweapons on their political enemies as well as American citizens. It's becoming clearer by the day that the government sees its citizens as enemy number one. So is it a stretch to say that they could create a